A giant of investigative journalism here in southern New England has been laid to rest. This morning, family, friends, colleagues and officials all came together to say goodbye to Jim Terracani. Eyewitness News reporter Steve Nielsen tells us about today's services. Steve? Well, Mike Shannon, more than 40 reporters stood with white ribbons pinned to them as Jim Terracani's honor guard. The sun gleamed off their motorcycles. The mounted command stood ready as the casket arrived. That is the ultimate sign of respect. We reserve them for very special uh, honors. Investigative reporter Jim Terracani is walked by an honor guard of more than 40 journalists. Lives the watchdog reporter impacted over decades. Terracani died last week after battling various health conditions. He was 69. Well, I both feared and admired him and my admiration only grew after I left and went to the New York Times. That's Times reporter Dan Barry. The two worked together in Providence in the 80s. As the old saying goes, that back then it was a reporter's theme park. There was so many things going on. He said the reporters here aren't just standing for the person, but the actions he took to defend the First Amendment, like when Terracani famously served a federal sentence for refusing to reveal a confidential source. What he represented in terms of the fourth estate and in terms of journalism, uh, standing up for what's right. The pallbearers carrying him to the service at Christ the King in South King's down Thursday included Target 12 investigator Tim White, former state police colonel Stephen O'Donnell, and Providence Police Chief Hugh Clements. He was always fair, balanced. Terracani earned multiple Emmy Awards and an Edward R. Murrow Award for investigative reporting. He survived by his wife Lori White, the head of the Providence Chamber of Commerce. Beyond journalism, Terracani was remembered as a supportive husband, a talented chef, and a lover of music, especially rock and roll. I'm Steve Nielsen, Eyewitness News.